Also, I'm including that part in the episode. No! <laughs> no! No! <laughs> yes. Disclaimer. We do not own or claim ownership of the Pokemon franchise and any Pokemon established in official canon. That's all owned by Nintendo, Game Freak, and Creatures. This is just a podcast made by four friends who love Pokemon. It's our love letter to a franchise most of us grew up with. So please go support the official release. Previously on PKMN Legacy. Only the strong survive. That is the way of the cult of Nuzlocke. Where are we exactly? Russet Town. You reach Maple Research Laboratory. You see this rather raggedy looking cowboy fella. Boy howdy. Name's Luke. Just a neighbor borrowing a cup of book. This is Professor Maple. She's the professor who got my daughter to start her journey as a Pokemon trainer. This is my parasect that I caught that tried to kill us. Is it a normal parasect? I'll have to do some more tests to find out. Since you did break into my house, technically, how about you help with dinner tonight? Let's do it! Sure. Eventually, you compose yourself, and you join the rest of them at the table. Now then, me and Velma here ran some tests on your interesting parasect here. Uh Uh-huh. Do you know what we found? No. Nothing. We found nothing. Absolutely nothing. That we know about any existing types. Of course, we'll need to do some more testing in the future, but... I think you've come across a brand new type. What? It's not awesome! What type? Well, you three discovered it. It's only fair that you name it. Uh, <gasps> what? I, I, uh, hmm. I, I'm going to let Velma here give it the type name. I'm not good with that sort of thing. And Velma just kind of vibrates in her chair. <laughs> so quick question. So we don't know what type it is at all? You do not. In fact, I can now show you the sheet for Parasect Drive. Oh, sweet. Let me just, uh, in fact, I'll show it for everyone for the time being. I have them listed down in the description for the type. Grass and uh, type. Grass and uh. There's magic bug boy. No need to eat food. See, I was thinking like crystal type or like prism type. Prism type? I like prism type. Or what, like if we think of like, you know, like light prisms. Because that's kind of what it looks like it has on its back, almost as like a light prism. I like that idea. Like, is there any word related to that? (gasps) Rainbow type. Nirvana type. Nirvana type. (laughs) I like the idea of crystal, though. Crystal sounds cool. Yeah, crystal type. Crystal crab! Crystal crab! It's a crystal crab! Or what about, like, gem? I'm looking at a thesaurus. (laughs) We're back to the thesaurus now. Okay. Yes, we are. We came full circle from episode zero. There's like, yeah, crystal comes up. Crystal, gem... Mineral. The crystal gem Pokemon. <laughs> jewel. Jewel type. Ooh, jewel type Pokemon. Ooh, jewel. But I like crystal too. Crystal or jewel I think are both really cool. I like jewel type. Let's do it. Let's do jewel type. So J-E-W-E-L? Yes, not J-U-U-L. Yeah, not no, no, that. no. Not like, no, we don't, we don't endorse that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make sure to get that, uh, make sure that you get your credit for your great new discovery. <laughs> hmm. I still have to give this Pokemon a name. Yeah. Let's see. Jewel type Pokemon. Uh, You click. Uh, Cannot tell if it's a boy or a girl. I'm going to go with... Diamond. My diamond. (laughs) My diamond. My diamond. (laughs) You couldn't see, but I was I was doing the diamond hand thing. Yeah. (laughs) Me too. I felt it. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you now have a jewel typed parasect, grass and jewel type named Diamond. Sick. Oh well, you know, we only could do this after having a near death experience. Ha ha ha. Hmm. I'm very jealous of you all. Making such a great discovery. And this one was actually right below the town. Really? Yeah. We went through this big cave system in order to get to it. 
Interesting. I did not know there was a cave system underneath us. I have more places to explore now. Uh, just be careful. Uh, there's kind of a clan or cult. So just be mindful of that. A cult, you said? Uh, yes. Uh, what was their name? Uh, the clan... The cult of Nuzlocke. Yeah, that's it. Yes, that's... How do you know that? She takes off her glasses a bit and cleans them up. Hmm. Professor? Oh, sorry. Um, just bringing back some memories. Um, it's getting pretty late. Um, would you like to stay the night? Well, I guess it would be better to stay here than in a Pokemon Center. I'm fine with staying here if you two are. I'm down for it. Sounds great. Wonderful. I'll get some cuts ready for you right away. Lovely. Thank you, Professor Maple. Oh, my pleasure, dear. My pleasure. Night comes. Maple's shown you to the guest rooms. She stayed up to do some more work in her lab, but all things considered, you three drop like logs. And we go to Maddie. Yes. How do you re- how do you dream usually? Me myself? You or your character? I just kind of want to get the, your quote unquote logic for dreaming. Yeah, I dream really vividly personally. I dream almost every night and I have all of the five senses in my dreams, and I usually remember most of my dreams, so. Really? Pretty clearly. I wish I knew how to do that, because I can't remember crap when I dream. Maddie, your body is so worn out. You've been sleep deprived. You've been recovering from that whole coughing loopy episode. Mm -hmm. It's a type of exhaustion where you're physically aware of each separate part of your body, and they are all sore. Mm. So even in your dream, you can still feel this numbing soreness about your body, and you can also still feel the weight of your blanket. It is heavy, it is enveloping you, and you can't see past this blanket of yours. Just darkness. I think first, Maddie would look around. Your body, still being numb and sore, can only allow you so much wiggle room, so to speak. You don't have the full motion control to move your entire being, just your head. And even that, only slightly. You can sort of pivot it from side to side in a sort of wiggle motion and look out of the corners of your eyes. And as you do, you can hear and feel dirt and earth rubbing against your face. Hello? Is there anybody there? The only answer you get is the sound of wind blowing through branches, the chattering of a bestial nature, the clashing of battle, and then all that goes away, replaced by a deep thudding coming closer and closer. Who's there? Show yourself! You hear a voice, muddled and speaking in gibberish. Then, you feel a wetness surrounding your face, water rushing past it, some getting in your eyes. The world around you starts to feel softer and softer, and you feel a few specks of light piercing your face. Ah! What's going on? A pair of giant hands wrap around your face and pick you up. The mud around you erupts as you are sent hurtling into the sky. You try to see who has you, but the light is blinding. You can only make out the silhouette, but you can tell it is much, much bigger than you are. Uh, hello? There's a moment of silence as it stares at you, and you... Stare back 
and then it pecks you right in the face. Yeah! And you wake up in the bed that you slept in, in Maple's lab. You feel on your chest a small little Natu, this green little ball of a bird, and it is pecking you awake. Oh, so it was a dream, and you woke me up. The Natu spins around a bit and lifts one of its legs towards you, and you see that there is a note attached to it. Oh, thank you, cute little thing. (laughs) And Maddie takes the note and she opens it up. And written in this very extravagant cursive, you read the following message. Mademoiselle Leclerc, I hope you have had time to situate yourself to the Appalachian air. But remember, you are a student, not a tourist. As such, you will occasionally give me updates on your fashion research. Within the next few days, please give my little Pecky Pecky your work to show me. Pictures, sketches, whatever shows that you are redefining your voice as a fashionista. Provided that you are in a town or city, simply call for him and he will find you. I am looking forward to seeing your progress. Professor Bourgeois. Oh my god. And Maddie, like, puts the note down slowly and she's she's got, like, this terrified look on her face because she had completely forgotten why she was here in the first place to kind of study abroad because she had gotten so involved with Velma and Chris. I don't have any work to show! And then not to, like, tilt his head. Don't tell the professor! He just oh! blinks out of existence. <laughs> We're in a simulation. You recognize that that was a teleport. Oh! I... I'm, I'm sorry. I can't unhear the <laughs> sound that the fucking Natu would make. <laughs> um, whenever you want to call him back, provided that you are in a town or a city, you simply call his name, Pecky Pecky, and he will Aww. appear before you. I love him. Great. We've got some work to do. How is everyone else waking up today? Uh, I'm going to say that Chris is an early bird for once. And is uh, just moving around, probably cleaning something that he shouldn't. Uh, I maybe the dishes from last night, maybe. Uh, Even though uh, Maple told you to leave those alone. I'm a grown man, and I wish to clean. Okay, so okay, so you're at the kitchen sink with all the pots hanging over the stove, and you're just uh, polishing them to a fine sparkle. I'm guessing. It seems like it's been a while since they've been this clean, and it's very concerning to me. Maddie and Velma, I assume that you are sleeping in the same room. How about Velma? How is she waking up? I'm going to say Velma is a late riser and that she's still asleep right now. So even with her visit from Pecky Pecky, you're still asleep? (laughs) Yes. (laughs) All right, Maddie, you look to your side and you see a little gremlin just sprawled out on the bed. (laughs) I forgot forgot she was was here. here. I shouldn't have screamed so so loud. How did she not wake up from that? And Maddie kind of like looks over and sees that Velma, I'm guessing is kind of facing away from her a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. She kind of like peeks over. You know those those shots in cartoons where you see like the character's face as they're sleeping and it's from a front shot of them and then you see somebody like slide into the frame above them like, whoop. Yep. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You have a slide whistle? I got this, I got this. <laughs> yes, that is exactly what happens. She's so cute when she sleeps. Maddie, I need to make a quick check. Okay, okay. No! W- with that negative one for your quick roll, you are not nimble enough to dodge a spray of slobber as she rips a giant snore. Oh! No. <laughs> yes. And then Maddie shoves Velma and she's like, You're <laughs> disgusting! <laughs> Velma suddenly shoots up. She does like that kind of kung fu fighting pose. And, Who was that? Who was that? Who was that? Oh. Oh, it's only you. <sighs> Maddie just looks at her deadpan and she has some slobber on her cheek and she wipes it and she flicks it off of her hand and she's like, good morning. Ah, good morning. I forgot we were here. Me too. Man, we've been traveling so much lately. I know. Disclaimer, I'm not snore shaming anyone. <laughs> <laughs> here, wait, can I just re-record? Instead of saying you're disgusting, can I say that's disgusting? I I will allow it. Great. I just want, I didn't want to be like mean because we're buddies. Yeah. Let me just give you some, uh, okay. Uh, three, two, one. Ew. That's disgusting.
disgusting. Thank you. Okay. Also, I'm including that part in the episode. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Back to the pause menu we go. Hello, hello. It's Kay, your friendly GM. I hope you're enjoying the podcast so far. Uh, If you are enjoying the show, consider supporting us on Patreon. We got perks like seeing your name at the end of the episode on YouTube, access to behind-the-scenes bonus tidbits. Uh, Our latest one looks into folklore and folklore studies and how it relates to the campaign. And for our $10 and up Ultra Baller tier patrons, you get your name mentioned here in the pause menu. So a shout out to. Auto Knight 01, Cami Cat, Dongo the King, Donkey Oto, and Lizzie McPoof. And for those of you who want to support the show but are low on funds a bit right now, how about tweeting about the show using the hashtag PKMNLegacy? If you do, we might use your name for an NPC in the campaign. Uh, I don't think we'll be introducing any new ones for a while, but still, uh, never too early to add your name to the list. Time for some plugs. I have one this time. Uh, so voice actor Jun Yoon put together a cover of Hamilton's opening number, Alexander Hamilton. He's gathered a bunch of voice actors to sing with him, including myself. I'm actually singing the part of Washington. So if you want to hear me, if you want to hear him, if you want to hear them, if you want to hear it, I'll include the link to the cover in the description of this episode. Also, at one part of the song, Jun raps in Korean. And if that is not enough to convince you to watch it, who hurt you? Hey everyone, Terrence Dry here, letting you all know that you all need to go and have a nice tall glass of water. That's my announcement. I just want you all to have a nice glass of water, stay hydrated, take a breather, and just relax. Because you know what? You deserve to have a relaxing time. And I'm glad you're here listening to the PKM Legacy. And I want you all to know that we really enjoy you all watching our series. Watching, listening, or, you know, both. Hey Kay, we can do both, right? Well, we I got, we got the visuals right. I mean, if they're watching the YouTube version, then yes, they're doing both, I guess. But yeah, okay, I, cool. Okay, yeah, just, um, doing both. Just cut me off, and that's wonderful. Me. Anyway, that was my announcement, and I hope you all have a wonderful day, night. Did we get the time zones right for that, Kay? No one cares. Time's an illusion; doesn't exist anymore. So yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. All right, thanks for sticking with us. Next episode is scheduled to come out on Thursday, December third. Back to your regularly scheduled program. When I can manage to keep to a schedule, unpause. <laughs> As you go downstairs, Chris, Mm -hmm. between you and Professor Maple, who do you think would have gotten to the kitchen first to make breakfast for everybody? Well, I feel like Chris was, he was already like up and about very early in the morning cleaning. And he realized what time it was. And he's like, huh, guess it's time to make breakfast. All right. And what is, what does Chris make? Oh, hmm. What in the Pokemon world can I use for eggs and it not be considered weird? Ooh. Because I'm, I'm pretty sure I can't use any of the eggs the professor has because I'm, I'm about 100% certain it would be illegal. They're research projects. That's actually, <laughs> um... Huh. Yeah. What are egg substitutes? I don't um, think there mm-hmm. are any. We ask the real deep questions on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> for it. Eggs. Let's are you look. well? Here's the question: Are you allowed to eat meat in the Pokemon world, or any well, sort of animal product? You can eat like, or is that considered immoral? The, the way we have it is that, I mean, you can eat meat from Pokemon because Pokemon are the animals in the world. But it, since you kind of live and work alongside them. It's kind of taboo. Mm. Okay. Now there, there you but they have do have dairy rumors. products. Well, dairy. Well, dairy's kind of fine if it's done properly. If it doesn't hurt the uh, well Pokemon. Here's the thing: according to Sword and Shield, they like only eat Pokemon curry. You could also put into the fact that like you can actually eat like the the sweet Pokemon, like Alcremi, Milkery. Uh, oh my god! You can actually eat them. Yeah, it's true. Wait, do they grow back? I'm not sure. Is that a thing that you do in the game? You can. It states in the Pokedex that you uh, you can actually eat Alcremie's like cream, or you can eat Milkry. Oh my god! You can eat actually the, the ice cream Pokemon. You can eat them. 
but like, is it is it like is it's like you milk the cream out of the alcremi? No. Or do you like consume its essence and body? <laughs> it's more like the alc. Okay, so like for for example, the alcremi can either a put like some of its own cream onto whatever you're eating, or you can just straight up eat it. Oh. You straight up eat the. Oh my god. <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs> What were we even talking about before? <laughs> what he's making for breakfast? Breakfast, eggs. Can we make? Can we have eggs for breakfast? Um, how about a nice? <laughs> how about a nice berry salad? Just a nice fruit salad. Yes. Okay, yeah, that's good. That. Unless let's it's a cherry. It's unless it's a cherry bee or a bon sweet. Then we can't. Then we're back where we belong. Um, um, no, they're like peach and cherry berries and stuff like that. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Cereal. How about a big old bowl of cereal? Is cereal a thing in Pokemon? Yeah, it's grain. It's that's. I think that's the only safe option we have right now until we do okay. more research. I found this on the web for a cereal, a thing of Pokemon. Check it out. Stay out of the series. <laughs> Wait, is there a cereal Pokemon? Well, oh. nine to generation nine. <laughs> I, I mean, I'll say this much. I'm assuming there could be cereal in this, in this world, considering they have like champions that are sponsored by different regions and towns and cities. So maybe they did create a cereal question mark? You know what? Well no, 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 no. Have you guys have you ever seen the Pokemon parody, that really, really old video? Which one? Which one? The one where it's like about Ash and he's got like the Pikachu it's like it's the parody of the original series and Pikachu has like a super deep voice and Professor Oak doesn't have any pants. And like, oh, that one. Is that the one with Fuck Yeah Pidgey? No, it's not. It's with Caterpie, Caterpie, yeah. And Misty, Ash mistakes Misty for a Pokemon. This is relevant, Kay, I promise. Okay. It's totally relevant. Go, go on. Then. Basically, at the beginning of the video, Ash wakes up and he goes, wow. As he's like, I'm about to become a Pokemon master. Better get over to the professor's house. And then his mom comes in and his, mom's go, his mom goes, Ash, don't forget to eat your breakfast. Have some fruit salad. And then it's like, do, 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 fruit salad. Yummy, From yummy. From the Wiggles. Yes. Yeah, I remember that yes. now. Oh my God. <laughs> so I just think that we should eat fruit salad for breakfast because that's- Yummy, yummy. Let's do it. Yes. <laughs> I can't believe we wasted this much time on the concept of whether or not you can devour a Pokemon. This is important, This okay? is very important. This is I mean, world building right here. In the world of Pokemon, you can eat slow poke tails. You can oh my actually God. eat other Pokemon. Yeah, but that was, Team Rocket was harvesting the slow poke tails, so that makes it kind of shifty. Yeah, I mean, you gotta remember, people dry, were still- Dry, have some fruit salad. Okay. I'm sorry to interrupt, okay, Dry. They have a fruit salad. <laughs> Where the heck were we again? Breakfast. breakfast. Okay. We're getting breakfast. All right. All right. So, so, okay. Dry, you're in the kitchen. You're preparing a fruit salad. You see Velma and Maddie come down the stairs. Good morning, you two. Sleep well? Very good. I'm trying to think of a Pokemon. What's like a Pokemon that sleeps for the... I, I like a Snorlax. Ah, so that's what I was hearing last night. That was not me. Mm-hmm. It was Velma. You mean this tiny, adorable little girl made that kind of sound? Ah, uh, I don't believe it. You'd be surprised. Or oh, that nothing? Well, you all, you both must be very hungry. So here, I've made you some delicious and non-made with egg fruit salads. Oh, thank you, Chris. Ah, oh, please, thank you so much. You are very welcome. Hey, wait, can I make a roll to see how well I made these? Um... Yeah, that's definitely a heart check. Okay. Aw, but what if he made them with heart anyway? Fair enough, so let's find out. You get a, ne you get, you get a negative roll, it means you poisoned them. Oh no. <laughs> it's gonna be a very short game then. <laughs> okay. Okay, I, gotta, I, gotta, I rolled a two. Okay. <laughs> Considering it's really just taking fruit and chopping it up and putting it into a bowl, you feel like you did pretty okay at this. I did average. <laughs> it is salad and it is fruit. Well done. Yummy, yummy. Well done. <laughs> you hear a door open and you see Professor Maple walk out of her study with a knapsack in tow. Oh, sorry. Did I wake you all? No. Oh, no, no. You're up. Well, I hope you had a very good sleep. Oh, yeah, well, definitely. You've got some nice rooms up there. <laughs> Thank you. It's been ages since I've had company, and it makes me feel very bad that I have to dash and run right now. Oh? Where are you going? 
After you mentioned the cult of Nuzlocke, I have to go on some league business. League business? Yes, but I did promise you answers, didn't I? I mean, if you have time. Well, I guess I'll have about as much time as it takes to, uh, enjoy that delicious bowl of eggless fruit salad you have there. <laughs> Thank you. I made it with heart. Mmm, <laughs> that tastes pretty fair. Thank you. I'm proud of it. She puts down her fork and adjusts her glasses a bit. Right then. Uh, I'm sure you have many questions about the cult of Nuzlocke, so go ahead and ask away. Well, if anyone doesn't want to go first, I believe I will be the first one to inquire about something specific. What is the cult of Nuzlocke? Because it doesn't seem to be like any other organization like Team Rocket or Team Magma. They are much more, they have much more draconian methods than the others. I think the best way to sum them up is they are an extremist, eco-terrorist criminal group. They derive their aesthetic and their, as you put it, draconian methods to the culture of the Age of the King though it's a mockery of all the historical work I've done on them. Is the age of the king? Uh, yes. You see, I'm a uh, researcher and historian in my free time when I'm not being a professor of Pokemon. Uh, the age of the king is one of the historic ages that predates our current age, a millennia or two ago, to be exact. Does that have anything to do with the king tower? Oh, so you've noticed that. Yes, it, it, it does have to do. I believe the king's tower used to be a, a place of worship of some sort to the king itself. Or maybe it was built as a token of respect or to show off the king's power, so to say. Now, though, it's been renovated and turned into the base of operations for the Pokemon League, and it's where we have the Pokemon League tournaments. Oh, so we can go there. Yes, once you have all eight badges, just head back to Port Gala and the ferryman Charlie will give you a ride over. Charlie? He's the only one who knows how to navigate those waters around there. Where can we find him? On the, uh, outer docks. Uh, you probably passed him if you were coming through there. Perhaps, but my memory's a little hazy. You know, what with, uh, fighting the cult of Nuzlocke and all. Yes, you did mention that. It would... Help me in my report very much if you told me exactly what happened over there. Well, apparently a meteor landed there. And while the whole area was clear, we saw those guys at an old sawmill. Do you have any idea what they would want with an old meteor? That doesn't exactly fit their M.O., so to say. I'd assume that if they were looking for it, they'd probably want to either see if they would be of any use to their conquest or to simply destroy it and get it out of the way. It's only a guess, I guess. <laughs> hmm. Interesting. But you said you took them on. In a way. They were, uh... It's a very loose way of saying they beat, beat me. They're really strong. Especially that one... What was her name again? Maxine. Yeah. She's, uh... She's pretty scary. I've dealt with a lot of Nuzlocke cultists over the years. And this Maxine doesn't exactly ring any bells for me. What do you know about her? Well... I can definitely tell you that, uh, she seems to know how to use, uh, what? Lucario. Yes, and, uh, she's very, very strong. Stronger than I had anticipated, which led to me being knocked unconscious. And also my... And also incapacitating Ginger. So... It was not a pleasant memory to relive. But that is exactly what happened. A Lucario, you said? Yes. Did she display any special powers of her own? I'm... 
I cannot tell whether her power comes from pure, raw strength or from something else, but I can definitely attest that she is very, very strong. Well, let's hope that it's just pure strength. Otherwise, that would mean that she would be an aura guardian. A what guardian? You may have noticed that when a Lucario attacks, they have this sort of uh, shimmering color about their moves. Yes. That energy that envelops them, that is what an aura is. It's a sort of uh, inner energy that manifests externally. Mm. And if a human can manipulate that energy the same way, that makes them an aura guardian. What can they do with that energy? I don't rightfully know myself, though I assume quite a lot. How could a human even do that? Humans can be capable of quite a bit, if given the right means to do it. Or the wrong ones. You see her bowl has finished? I do have to go, but... This coat of Nuzlocke... I and the rest of the Pokemon League have been fighting them for years. And it would not be fair to make this your fight as well. So, if given the chance, please avoid this cult of Nuzlocke and focus on challenging the gyms, getting stronger. Mm-hmm. Right. I think that would be the safest. The second word of advice, as she picks up her bag and adjusts her gear, if you are ever in a confrontation with them and you come across a giant man with tattoos on his arms and face and body. Run. Why? If you thought that this Maxime was stronger than you expected, well... Maddie, like, tentatively places a hand on her shoulder and says... Good luck, okay? Yes. Hopefully it's not too bad, but if new people like this Maxine are showing up, it means they're recruiting, and the sooner we take care of this, the better, so... Oh! One more thing. And she fishes through her pockets and reaches in and hands you three a key. Uh, what? what is this for? Well, if you're staying in town for a bit, or staying in the region and you need a place to stay, well, I do need someone to look after the lab, so two Pidgeys with one stone. Oh, uh... That's very kind of you. Thank you. We have access to your lab? Well, you have access to everything that I need you to have access to. Trust me, you're not getting in the places that you don't need to get into. Aww. Just make sure that you keep it locked so we don't have any wandering cowboys coming in. Oh! Professor! Uh, Yes, Maddie, dear? Speaking of the strange cowboy, after he left, I noticed that there was a a book missing from your shelf. Oh, I think you mentioned the book, yes. Though if it's just a book, I'm sure we don't have much to worry about that. You don't think it's something important? Why would he want it? Uh, Do you know what part it was from? Can you point in the general direction? I still have a a few seconds left before I need to head out. Maddie walks over to the bookshelf because she knows exactly where the space was when she was looking around, and she points to the empty space, and she says, It was right here. This is where I keep my works on the uh, history of the Age of the King. That's funny. Weren't we just talking about that? Her brow furrows a bit. Well, one problem at a time, then. Oh, okay. I think I've, uh... Spent about as much time as I can right now. Uh, thank you for the eggless fruit salad. Uh, I really have to dash now. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for letting us stay. My pleasure, dear. You see her charge at the door, give a whistle, jumps into the air, and a giant braviary catches her by the shoulders, and you see them flap away out of sight. Huh. That was weird. That was weird, right? I know. How do you make eggless fruit salad? It doesn't make any sense. You made it! <laughs> <laughs>